Now the primer on our wheel has been drying up by a heating vent overnight. I'm looking at it and uh, I'm thinking we're dried up pretty nice, but of course I'm never satisfied. I always want to detail out things a little bit more. I want to get some sanding done on these radiuses. I want to work these flats with a sanding block. And one little thing I forgot to do, I forgot down in here, there's some little uh, roughness to the casting. I'm going to try to get in there, make a little tool, or maybe get in there with a Dremel tool. Just a little more detailing, but I didn't want to start anything because Luciano's on his way over here. And actually, he's in the middle of painting a set of ninja wheels right now. And uh, I don't know, but I'll, I always like to hear the story, and we always want to have a cup of coffee. That cup of coffee is an important thing. And then I'll get down here and get to work. Now, look at that, some of my used, and believe me, these are well-used Dremel bits. Some of them that might be good for getting into that little, that little channel there. See, some of them, and you never know until you start working. This one may be good. And I do have some of these. I just wanted to show this. Some people don't know you can even buy these. These are carbide. They're real machine shop ones. These are not the ones you buy in Lowe's. This one's already pretty well used, but it's carbide, so it's, it picks up the aluminum. But I did have one, and I, what I wanted to show, oh, here it is. This one is probably going to be real good for getting in there, and it's, it's one of the, uh, the carbide ones that's just all worn down, but for getting in on aluminum, this may be the perfect one. We're going to find out after Luciano leaves. This is what every day we're doing. Cookies, cookies. Look at these cookies up oh, here. Cookies yeah. here, cookies. Oh, for me, right? <laughs> They're all every once for you. They're oh, all for you. God. Oh, if you, can't, if you can't make custom motorcycles, at least you can make cookies, right? Holy mackerel. There's so much decoration. Yeah. Oh, we had fun with these yesterday. Mm, this one's tired. This and cool. there's, you don't gain weight eating these. These are they're, they're, Definitely eat one no, cookie. No day. calories? No, nah, no calories at all. So anyway, it was great seeing Luciano as it always is. And now he had an issue that, that's worth mentioning. He's painting a set of uh, ninja wheels now, but the person who bought the bike from painted them before that. The paint all wrinkled up. When paint wrinkles up like that, what usually is the case is you have two incompatible paints putting lacquer over enamel, enamel over lacquer, or any combination of that. But I don't, I wanted to do this little test, show this on video, because I can run this machine very slow. Let's see if I can get in here. Now, you might be saying, and probably uh, you'd, you're probably more right than wrong, that nobody's going to see this. You, you know what? I see it, and that's now I want to get a radius around this whole edge. I want to be able to, because I'm going to see in there now. See, when it's flat black, you don't really see it. When it's silver, you're probably going to see more of it. So I want that all to be cleaned up in there. That's the next step. And then I'm going to wet sand the whole wheel down. And I want to get all these radiuses I made up. I have several tools, let me just show some of them. A little tool like this that I can put sandpaper on to get that edge. I have a soft sanding block, and this is balsa wood end grain. I put some CA on it for dressing off all these hard areas. Again, a combination of different tools, and one of the, the staple tools is always the paint stick with the point for getting in all these little areas. So we have a combination of things we want to do, but the basic thing, See now, a lot of people would just sand this. They wouldn't sand it. They just go paint it. It'll make it just a little bit nicer. A little bit. Every time you add one sanding step, it just makes it a little bit nicer. Now I did quite a bit of work in there by hand and with a Dremel tool. In fact, it reminded me of the old RD wheels, going back to when we did the RD wheels, and I did a lot of grinding, and I know I got a lot of response to that anyway. But the RD wheels, that's one of the focal points, and getting those big webs out of the end of the wheels, I think really made it look a lot nicer. Anyway, we're going to get some old, and I guess we'll start with 220 here just to rough some of this out. It's our, and I, I always put this on the video, Rhino Wet Paper. This is our Portuguese sandpaper that we've been using, and we have had really good luck with this. Now what I want to do is one part at a time. I'm going to, the same way I did the sanding of the other part, 
basically do one segment at a time. The worst thing to do is just bounce all over the place. I like to get and keep the paper wet. This is a step a lot of people leave out and in the end, uh, the people that paint and no paint, they'll look at it and they go, yep, skip the step. But this adds a really nice dimension. The more you get the parts flat right now, what we're looking for is flat. The idea is any surface that's flat, it's like a diamond, a facet of a diamond. If we get these flats flat, flat, if, if everything is like that, and a good example of for somebody who, somebody who doesn't understand about paint, there's a simple example. You go to a lake early in the morning when the lake is flat and it's like glass, you see the reflection of the trees on it or on the background. And you go, wow, what a great picture that would be. We have several pictures. We, since I love photography, I've shot a lot of them. I'm just not good at it. Then the wind starts to blow at about 10 o'clock. There's a little ripple on it. You can't see any reflection. Well, it's the same with paint. If you make this flat, when you make it dead flat, the light bounces out and bounces up. This, it's exactly like a diamond. So in effect, we're trying to make our own little version of a diamond here. And right now it isn't critical if we use 220 or 180, you know, well, well you wouldn't use 50 grit, but we just want to smooth this out because every time we sand it, it's going to get flatter than the time before. And I'm not going to try to do this, even though it's a beautiful day to paint out there. I wouldn't compromise if, you know, something else comes along. I want this, I'm going to try to do between one spoke at a time, then maybe one of these at a time, but by segmenting it out like that, and people that are new to painting, you have to find your own thing that you're comfortable with, but right now here's just another good example when you have a basic 101 understanding of paint. If I take my hand where I, where I have this unsanded and sanded, totally different. If I were to put a shiny clear coat over this and over this, this is going to have that reflective quality. Well, think of a mirror the same way. It's going to have a lot more of the reflective quality that I'm looking for. Now, usually when I get to this point, I take a, take a break because, the, again, this work takes time. And it's a step that an awful lot of people leave out. And to get that final, the final look that I'm looking for, it's going to take, it's going to take a lot of work. Well, we finally arrived at that point. I'm ready to dry the wheel. I want to use some compressed air to get in these spokes because I'm afraid there's some dust or dirt or some water from sanding up in there. We'll do a thorough clean. Get this prep sold up and get it outside. The, the weather was so beautiful this morning. Well, let's hope it holds up. Having a nice uh, a day that the wind isn't blowing will be definitely to our advantage. Now what I have to do now is get on the next coat of primer. I want to clean off the, uh, get all this, see it's all got soapy water and everything in it, but I'm real concerned that I've got this sanded and detailed as much as I can for this coat. If the next coat of primer goes on nice, we'll be ready to shoot some silver. We'll be very careful about, uh, the thing to be careful of is not to get a lot of paint on the edge, minimum paint on the edge. That's the one thing that can be from putting on a tire, even the way we put tires on without tools. The I don't want to have a thickness of paint here that it, it peels or chips or just the amount we need. We're in here. It doesn't even matter. And up around the hubs and spokes. We're going to try to make this look like a piece of jewelry. Go to Zales Jewelry for your next R1 wheel. Yeah, I think we're ready to prep all that down. Looking forward to seeing that the next coat of primer. Now the reason for cleaning this up, you can see from the work we've done, the grinding, all of that. I'm going to take some simple green, just use this as a good excuse. Clean this all up, brand new tin foil, 
get the wheel all set and get the compressed air into those little crevices in the spokes because from this point on I don't want to pick up any dust I don't have to it's hard to have just hard to imagine it could be a nicer sunny look at this sun <laughs> if it wasn't for all the snow and ice you know riding today at 26 degrees anyway the hardest thing now is going to be i want to get down in these spoke areas it was good to see luciano this morning he's got great willpower for, <laughs> for not eating those cookies he ate the ducati cookie oh. we caught him Anyway, we're gonna just, just the slightest, anywhere I have to touch this up. And once this dries, and I think with that sun beating down on it, that's, that's gonna be when another hour or so, we're gonna be painting. Now I found in 70 degree weather about an hour is a good dry time for the primer if you're going to reshoot it the same day Which we're going to try to do, but I'm going to give it an extra hour today Just for a simple reason. It's really It's it's around in the high 20s here But you can see it's a nice sunny day And if you if you always keep in mind in cold weather Just leave yourself some extra dry time Now after being outside for an hour we had some unexpected company today, and so I thought, well, while I'm waiting for <laughs> sitting around and uh, celebrating, I thought I'd put this under the heating vent, which turned out to be a great deal because, wow, it's as dry as a bone. Wow, we're ready. And we still have enough daylight out there that I think we're going to be able to get, get some paint on it. But you never know. Every day around here turns out to be a, uh, a surprise a minute. Now, since I did this custom mix, and I really added a lot of pigment to this, there's more pigment in here than if you bought the paint from Gavin's, let's say. But the problem is, if you put too much pigment in, sometimes you lose the bind. So you get, there's a fine line you have to walk. And I can see right now. Now I can see the the this has only sat I think one day or two days, and already it's all it all sinks to the bottom. And there's a couple of things with silver you got to be really careful of. See, this is, there's a lot of pigment in here. And what's going to happen is, if I don't shake the gun every once in a while, it's going to kind of settle to the bottom. And then some parts will be a little different color. Now, I did my test the other day, and I really like the color. It has a very a nice bright look, but it doesn't have that cheesy look like, uh, well... There are some there are some silvers that just look like like fake chrome or I don't know what they look like. Anyway, I can't wait. Can't wait to do my test here. I've been waiting all morning. Now I've fallen for the, the old trick in the past. I've fallen for not mixing enough paint that a year from now, if I want to touch this up or paint more wheels, I've got enough to do two wheels now. But if I like the color, well, then that's gonna be lucky for me. Anyway, what I wanted to do here, I want to see how this is, whoa, boy, is this going to cover, wow, spectacular. When paint has extra pigment in it, it really does cover way better than, in fact, may have to thin it just a little bit. already I got to put a little thinner in the paint a little too thick I just wanted to show how much pigment is actually in this paint and that's why I've got to make it I've got to add thinner to it and of course I'll mix this mix this in thoroughly shake it up and then just reintroduce it into the gun it'll be a little bit thinner and it'll be just fine but by doing this you walk a fine edge too much pigment problem not enough it doesn't cover when you mix your own paint it's it's a little bit more work but you have such such a amount of choices of what you can do oh I love listening to the church bells maybe they're saying a prayer for me here now you'll see it'll spray totally differently we still have a lot of pigment in this paint which may ultimately be to our advantage we don't mind that. 
Oh my god, what a nice color. Come on, church bells, you can do it. I'm not sure you can, let me just... Let's we'll see if you can see how that's going to look as the sun hits it. And it hits those flat surfaces, you just get a burst of light. And all the radiuses I spent all that extra time on, well, all the extra time spent now starts to pay dividends. Now the amount of time you put into the prep on a job like this, you put all this prep in, and then at some point in time you start to see the fruits of your labor. Again, right out on the end here, we don't want to have to paint any thicker than necessary. Because even though we're not using tools, we are stretching the tire around that at some point in time. Boy, if you could see this in real life, this really is exceeding my wildest dream. Now, I used to do this in modeling all the time, is mix my own paint. So I have a good, a good feel for where too much is, but again, It is, it is really nice to be able to mix your own colors. And we do have plenty of pigments to deal with, to, to work with. In fact, the Suzuki wheels are a custom color. If I, don't, if I remember right, we mixed the gold. We might have mixed it to Glenn's Ducati too, I don't even remember, but wow. That is, that is really, I'm happy with that. Now, things I learned the hard way, many years, many years of painting over 50 years I've been painting, is never, ever sand silver. In modeling, we use the silver for a base coat and then sand the silver, but you always put the last coat of silver back on. But now we're just going to wait for this to dry. Because of the extra pigment, it's only going to require this one coat of silver. That's going to dry about a half an hour. I'm going to mix up the clear and get the base clear on. Two thin coats of clear, and then that'll have or everything will have to dry overnight. Now another small tip. Of course, I've mixed enough paint that, and I want to always know because who know, who knows? You know, a month from now, if I'm going to forget this, I'll put the wrong color silver in or something. Always want to mark it. I always want to mark the date too. Put it in with my all my other stuff, and you can see if you look close, I got different things for Glenn and Luciano and. Uh, different notations and different dates on everything. Just one of the drawers I have, and I have several of them, with, with these spare paints, because you never know when you're going to need them. In fact, Luciano just needed one the other day. He needed one of the, sil the Suzuki Silvers, and we had it right in stock. So just one of the tips that I learned from Bob Brookins, always keep the hardener for the two-part paint in the refrigerator, not the freezer, the refrigerator. Prolongs the life. And I see that just in time, the, the, the breeze is coming up. Now it's an old an old school trick and I've used it, I forgot to mention it. What I do is I take the clear, the first coat of clear only, and just put one drop of silver flake in it so that the flakes are only in the first coat of clear. It just makes the paint three-dimensional. And as I look at it, this looks pretty three-dimensional to me. Right now. Pretty cool in fact. That is really going to be one nice wheel. Now that's the first coat of clear that has the just a little bit of the silver flake in it. Whole first coat is on. I'm going to take the paint out of the gun, clean it real good because the last coat of silver, 
I don't want any flake in it. I just want it to be clear. But I think if you see the way the light's bouncing off that, that is going to look really nice. Hey, and if you like flat black, well, that's okay too. But I really do like to have parts that are nice and shiny and easy to clean. I think that's going to really look nice. Now while we're waiting for that first coat of clear with the silver specks, uh, specks, flakes, whatever you want to call it in there, good time to chop some ice off the pond. You can see just what kind of day this has been. Wow. It's cold, but what we've been able to do, there's no wind blowing and the sun is out, so we've been able to take advantage of this really to our advantage. What a long shot of the start in the pool, and it's time to get that last coat of clear on. Pretty exciting at this point in the project. You can really start to see some results. And this is just plain clear. And this should really give it a nice side look. Again, I'm trying to keep the paint minimized toward the edge of the rim. Just the minimum. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure you can even see this in real life in the, in the video. Well, drop it. There's not much there to be unhappy about. Well, I'm not sure what this looks like on the video, if you can see the, the extra little sparkles that are in that first coat of clear, and the gloss from the second coat of clear. That's an old school painting trick, by the way. And just now, put it aside to dry. Wow, he, we have, if you can only tell what a Beautiful day this has turned out to be. I had no idea it was going to be this good or this productive. It was really a good day. I feel like saying something silly like painting motorcycle wheels isn't easy. It's bitching. <laughs> I'm not sure. But I am sure of one thing. That is going to be one really nice wheel. I hope it shows up on the video. Now I just wanted to see before I uh, lock up the garage how this is drying up. Well, I don't know if you can see how nice that is. I really don't know if that shows on the video. I guess I'll see when I edit it, but boy, in real life, wow. And it just, it proves once again to me that it pays to do it right. It pays to just take the time because what's going to happen that wheel is eventually going to be on the back of the R1, and, and I never sell bikes, so it's going to be with me for a long time. Then we have the other decision to make. Probably uh, later in the winter, if time is available, and time is of the essence right now, because we have full-time babysitting uh, jobs to do and whatever. Um, and if the workload is appropriate, it'll be time to do the front wheel to match. I think they'll, they'll be a nice match pair. And once again, I... I remember, and I just I tell people, you want to polish a set of wheels, boy, it is labor intensive. You want to paint them gold, a lot less work. You want to paint them black, even less work. 
these were a lot of work because of all the grinding that was involved in it. And certainly at some point in the future, I was thinking Rob would like a nice set of gold wheels for this bike, but it's all in the future. For right now, hope you enjoyed the video. And we have to go get our baby. Well, show me some of your robots that you made. Let's see. Hmm? Oh, oh, robots. Let me see the robots. Let me see the robots. Are they taking a beating? Where's the other robots? There's robots all over the floor here. We're making cardboard robots today. What's this one? This one's got the jetpack. He can fly. What is that? A spaceship? Miles, this one can fly. Oh! Ah! Ah! He took another beating. Oh! Oh! He took another beating. Want to get out of here? Miles, you're getting to be high maintenance. How are those? How are those robots working out? Good. Over the ocean. There's some of the other hang gliders. I think that was Dave Fitzgerald up there. Was it either Fitzgerald or Benet Rodriguez? Because I think Thomas was the last one to jump. Doing a little twist in here in between the two big hills.